folks, this is Pastor Mike Hawker coming to you from Studio 66 with another Watchmen video broadcast. Studio 6, not 666, 66. It's the number of books in the Bible, all right? This is the Word of God studio right here. We're going to be dealing with the Word of God. I want to show you something that I saw um, when I woke up this morning. I always turn the news on. That kind of wakes me up a little bit. And, you know, they play those commercials that we ignore all the time. This one caught my eye. Take a look at this. Okay, this is um, the Sisters of Mercy, a Roman Catholic convent. And they started a hospital in the St. Louis area, I think, in the 1960s. St. John's Divine Mercy Hospital or something like that, all right? Uh, and it has grown into this big conglomerate corporate healthcare system. And they're buying up hospitals everywhere. They bought the local hospital, which is just two blocks away from our church here. It used to be Jefferson Memorial Hospital, this is Jefferson County. Now it's Mercy, and we always called it JMH. Uh, yeah, where are they taking him? Uh, down at JMH. All right. So now it's Mercy Hospital Jefferson. And we're going J-M-H-J. It's confusing. I'll tell you what they did. They went in that hospital, which was our local hospital, all right? And because they're the sisters of the divine mercy, in every office, every room, every broom closet, you name it, they hung a crucifix, a cross with a dead God hanging on it, the idle shepherd, that's not Jesus. They ruined that hospital, as far as I'm concerned. A lot of other people agree with me. But anyway, they've take, taken over all these hospitals. This is their logo. You see the cross there? Notice that you have four elements there, and they, they match the, I'm going to show you this later on. The blue is the element of water. The green is the element of earth. The yellow or orange is the element of air because it has the sun in it. The red is the element of fire. They use, this is supposed to be a Christian organization. They're using the symbol for the four elements in their logo. What does that indicate? That's what we're going to look at today. Let's go to our scripture, 2 Chronicles 33. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. But he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. Now let's go to our list. He, for he built again the high places, and he reared up altars for Balaam, and made groves, and he worshipped all the host of heaven, and served them. And he uh, built altars in the house of the Lord. He built altars for all the host of heaven, and he caused his children to pass through the fire, also, he observed times he, and used enchantments. And here we are. We're dealing with number 11 and 13. He used witchcraft, dealt with a familiar spirit, and with wizards. 13 things that he did that brought him to do the 14th thing. And he set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God. And there's our logo there that we've been using all of this time, the unfinished pyramid with 13 rows on it. Once those are completed... Then the 14th thing can be added to it, which is the all-seeing eye, which is he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, we've been talking about witchcraft and wizardry. And some of the information, I'm going to back up just a little bit so we can get our bearings, because I was heading in this direction in the last watchman that we did. We're dealing with what this pyramid represents, the 13 rows of it plus the 14th part, which is the, the capstone. What does that represent? And we noted that the pyramid was a representation of elemental witchcraft. And as we go along, I'm going to explain that more. This is earth, air, fire, and water. All right? So let's look at the definition of witchcraft. It is religious ritualism that seeks to produce supernatural results by means of invoking spiritual forces. Plainly put, drawing a circle in it, invoking earth, air, fire, and water, invoking uh, the four elements, invoking the four winds, which are, the according to the Bible, we read this last time, these are spirits, devils, invoking um, north, south, east, and west. Any kind of ritualism like that, that 
is not trying to produce a natural effect like me picking up this pyramid with my hand. That's a natural effect, cause and effect. A supernatural effect, having this pyramid rise before your eyes without me or anybody else touching it, okay? A lot of you would freak out on that one, okay? So anyway, that's, that's what we're dealing with. And there is so much witchcraft, not just in witches, but in churches. And the more I do this ministry, the more I see it. And I hope to educate people on the fact that we are closer to the capstone being placed on top of the pyramid than I think a lot of people realize. We are very close to the dawning of this Novus Ordo Seclorum, this new world order. I think we're very, very close to that. Let's look at our pyramid. These rituals make use of the four classical elements, earth, air, fire, and water, symbolized by the four sides of their pyramids or high places. And remember, Solomon built the high places. All of these other kings did. There were high places everywhere. There are pyramids everywhere. These represent man-made mountains or let's say man-made kingdoms. Mountains in the Bible are a picture of a kingdom. Uh, in Daniel 2, the stone that's cut out without hands, which is Christ, he goes and destroys the ten toes, the kingdom, and the whole thing falls, and then that stone became a great mountain, okay? And that kingdom never ends. So kingdoms represent, uh, excuse me, mountains represent kingdoms. In this case, these kingdoms are man-made. They're false kingdoms. They're not of God. They're not... Uh, what God establishes, they are what man establishes, the Tower of Babel. More than likely a ziggurat type formation, which is like a step pyramid. But it was basically mankind, mankind's effort at establishing a world order over the earth. And so we have the unfinished pyramid, which represents a new world order. But the Bible says that which, is, that which was is that which shall be. There is no new thing under the sun. The new world order is nothing more than the old world order reborn, okay? Brought back to this earth. Now, and I'm trying to move along fast here because I got some things I want to show you this week. I keep saying, boy, wait till you see this. And we never get to it, all right? So the biblical understanding of earth, air, fire, and water, north, south, east, west, the four spirits, the four winds, and so on. The biblical understanding of that is in Ephesians 6, uh, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And let me <clears throat> add this, and I think it's understood by the passage, and I may have said this but I want to say it again. If I'm fighting a man, if a man is going to attack my family, uh, he's going to go after my wife, um, somebody sent my wife a message that said, hello, dear. And it's some guy. And my wife said, who is this? I said, I have no idea, but he's going to hear from me. So I wrote him back and I said, who are you and why are you calling my wife dear? You don't do that, okay? Don't come after my wife because you'll have to get through me to do it. it. Trust me, I'm not protecting her from you. I'm protecting you from her, all right? Anyway, um, it's my job. If somebody's going to come after my wife or my children or my grandchildren, I'm going to use whatever force is necessary to put a stop to it. Okay? It's not self-defense, it's family defense. I'm going to protect my family against any person. Any, if a dog comes after my children or grandchildren, okay, I'll, I'll have to put him down. But that's, that's how it has to be. If principalities or powers or rulers of darkness or spiritual wickedness comes against my family, I have to fight them differently. You can't shoot devils. Okay? 30 out sixes and... 38 specials and, you know, 44 caliber, these things, you cannot shoot devils with them. You have to fight them in a different way. You have to be shielded with 
faith. You have to have the breastplate of salvation. You have to have all these things related to the Word of God in order to fight them. So us fighting the New World Order, thinking that if we just get up enough guys with guns, we'll be able to put down the New World Order. I think you're wrong. In order to fight the New in order to keep the New World Order out of my home and out of my church, we fight it differently. We fight it with the Word of God. So you understand that going against what this pyramid represents is a spiritual battle and it must be fought in the spiritual realm. We fight it with prayer and we fight it with Bible reading. We fight it with Bible preaching, Bible proclamation, Bible believing is how we fight it. We believe what God said and if there are people out there who don't believe what God said, they are being led by these spirits. And the way to fight that off is it's to be done spiritually. So I want you to keep that in mind. We looked at a few verses last time and I'm going to bring them because I keep seeing new verses and I've added to this, all right, on how you see the four elements in the scriptures because they're there. You just got to use the Bible terminology like the fourth kingdom is the epitome of what the four elements represent. What Paul just showed us about these spiritual characters, that's the epitome of what the four elements represent. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, God said, Lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest, let's count this, the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Stop right here. He mentions them in relation to this number four, sun, moon, stars, host of heaven. If you go back to Genesis chapter one, on the fourth day of creation, God said he created the sun, the moon, and the stars, and they are for signs, for seasons, for days, and for years. So we know that the heavenly luminaries represent spirits, represent in some cases evil spirits. Think of stars in the sky. Well, he mentions in Ephesians uh, six, um, the rulers of the darkness of this world. That's the moon and the stars. And God told Israel, you go into Canaan land, they're already doing this and I don't want you to learn their religion. They worship the sun, the moon, the stars, all the host of heaven. And God said, I don't want you worshiping them. And, and notice the idea of worship is they're not just worshiping this large object that is in outer space. They're worshiping the devils that those stars represent. That's what that number four means. The number four represents the fourth kingdom and the fourth kingdom is made up of the sun, moon, the stars, even all the host of heaven. That's who it represents. Deuteronomy seven, take a look at this. You're gonna see that number again. But thus shall you deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, number one, and break down their images, number two, and cut down their groves, number three, and burn their graven images with fire. You want to destroy that kingdom? Uh, destroy their altars. No more sacrifices made. That means, <laughs> well, here I'm here, I'm fixing to get in trouble here. I'm not condoning violence against any religious organization in the United States of America. Okay, but I promise you, when Jesus comes back and with 10,000s of his saints, he is going to destroy every altar in every Roman Catholic church in the whole world because they crucify Christ again, all over again, and put him to an open shame every time they celebrate a mass. Destroy their altars, break down their images cut down their groves and burn their, and we already talked about all this. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it. Burn their graven images with fire. Four things that he told them to do. Why? Because they're dealing with a religion of the elements. They're dealing with the religion of witchcraft. Proverbs chapter 30. This is another verse that I found. Okay. These, ver these verses are all in the Bible. And one of the things that I, I would like to teach people is that when they're reading the King James Bible and they see a list of things like what we just saw here, count that list. Find out what number 
that represents and understand what that number means. So here's another one of them, Proverbs chapter, I just saw this, this last week, Proverbs 30 verse 11, there is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. That's number one. Number two, there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is, yet is not washed from their filthiness. Now, that's number two. Number three, there is a generation, oh how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. Number four, there is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among, the, among men. Notice he used the word generation. The word generation has the word gene in it. And the word gene, genetics, has everything to do with the meaning of the word generation uh, because of man and woman coming together and their genes joining together to create a new generation of offspring. So mom and dad, that's one generation. The child that's born of them is another generation, all right? In this case, we're dealing with a spiritual generation spiritual genetics. You say, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that angels have genetics. I don't believe that angels have DNA. I think they do. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. What does the Bible say? Man, I love this. Um, let's see, where we pick it up here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 38, But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. Every seed his own body. Seed, we know from the scriptures, seed is DNA. When you plant a seed in the ground, that seed, all it is, is an outer shell protecting a bundle of food and nutrients for a bundle of genetics, DNA, so that that DNA can grow and make a new body. So he says, it, God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, this verse 39, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, and another of fishes, and another of birds. He mentions four again. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. And the, the, the way this reads is, if it's a body... It has a seed attached to it. To every seed, his own body. And then he says there are celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. Terrestrial means of this earth. Celestial means of the heavens, the heavenly realm. Celestial bodies were produced by way of seed. You say, I don't, I don't believe that either. i read it to you. In Genesis chapter 1, How did God make man? Genesis 1, 26, and God said, let us make man after our image. How did God make man? He spoke his word. How did God make the stars? Verse 14, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven, divide the night from the day, or the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Anyway, I won't go into arguing that much, but the idea is at Proverbs chapter 30, 11 through 14, there is a generation, there is a generation, there is a generation, there is a generation. Yeah, we can see that in people, but I think by, by nature, by way of the way he's speaking here, there is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. These are spirits here that we're dealing with. And the way to fight them is spiritually. Prayer, Bible weeding. Bible weeding. Prayer, Bible reading. Not Bible weeding. We're not taking stuff out of the Bible. Prayer, Bible reading. Prayer, Bible reading. That's how you fight them. Pray some. Read a little bit more of the Bible. Believe the Bible. Proclaim the Bible. Listen to the Bible. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. It's just that simple because God designed these spirits to not like to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. They don't like it. Every time Jesus showed up on the scene, you see these devils freaking out, okay? They ne devils never said, hey, there's G Jesus, come on over here. Want a cup of coffee? 
No, they didn't act that way. It scared them to death. Daniel chapter 2. We see a squaring off here. A fight between two realms, two worlds. God's kingdom, Satan's kingdom. God's kingdom represented by four men. Dan Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. The devil's kingdom represented by, let's look at it, Daniel chapter 2, magicians, astrologers, sorcerers, and Chaldeans. All of these guys were practitioners of witchcraft. They knew about the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. They knew about the spiritual kingdom. They knew about, he mentions astrologers here. These are the guys, you're going to like this. Astrologers are the people who study the motions of the 12 signs of the zodiac. Remember what the word zodiac means? Circle of beasts. Zoa. Greek word zoa means beast, living creature. A circle of beast. Devils. Sagittarius. What's that? Okay. Um, scorpion. Revelation 9. Virgo. That's not the Virgin Mary. That's not the church. Virgo is part of what Mystery Babylon the Great is. So don't, don't fall for this stuff where, I won't get into it. Don't fall for it, okay? Um, at, at no time does God ever designate this cluster of stars over here as a Scorpio. And this one over here is Leo. God never does that. He never identifies them that way. Man does that. And they're different in different places of the world throughout history. But anyway, astrologers seek to worship the 12 zodiac signs and whatever those stars tell the astrologers to do, that's what people do. That's what worshiping and serving them is. Whatever the stars tell you to do, that's what you do. 12 of them. In contrast to that, I don't follow what 12 stars Actually, there's 13 now. Ophiuchus, which is the serpent bearer. The devil. Satan, the dragon. Ophiuchus represents sort of the king of the other 12. You following me here? So it's 13, right? I don't follow those. I follow 12 apostles and their leader, their master, Jesus Christ who destroys serpents. He doesn't carry them around. Oh, look, that's my pet serpent, okay? God gave me that this morning, okay? Anyway, so we have Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah squaring off against magicians, astrologers, sorcerers, and Chaldeans. Witchcraft versus the gospel. And see, all Daniel did was, Daniel didn't do any, any uh, rituals. He didn't uh, look at tea leaves. He didn't read palms. He didn't uh, cast stones out or dice out, or he didn't do any of that divination. They did not perform rituals. They did not invoke spirits. Daniel prayed, God, they're going to kill us all. And God, we're fine with that, but we just would rather live. And so God, for your kingdom's sake, will you show us what the dream was and what the interpretation it is? Then God showed Daniel the secret. Okay, guess what Nebuchadnezzar did with his astrologers and magicians and sorcerers and Chaldeans, okay? Let's just say that they lost their job. Daniel chapter 2 verse 27, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers show unto the king, still four again, but there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. The dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. And he gives him four kingdoms. And it's that fourth kingdom that is represented by earth, air, fire, and water, the four sides of the pyramid. And that's why part of the great seal is a four-sided pyramid because it represents the future coming of the fourth kingdom. Now, did the designers of the seal of the United States of America, did they, were they aware of that? Did they know that? I, I don't know. I don't think they did, though. 
I think that a spirit that worketh in the children to disobedience inspired them to design that particular logo. Those spirits know what it means. It means the advent or the coming of the fourth kingdom, which is what this pyramid symbolizes. Earth, air, fire, and water. All right? Now, and then he says, here's the secret. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron, part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong, partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, his DNA. They shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And remember, I showed you the meaning of the, of the elemental symbols. You have four pyramid or four triangles, which makes a pyramid. Two pointing up, two pointing down. Two of them have a line through it, and two of them don't. And what that means is the kingdom is partly strong and partly broken. Two of those triangles are divided and broken and the other two are strong. Do you get that? So the kingdom is partly strong, partly broken. It's iron and it's clay. And the goal is to bring all four of these together so that the fifth thing, the fifth element, can come forth out of the joining together of these four. Two of them are divided and two of them are not. Two of them are broken and two of them are not. So they, the two that are broken represents the clay, mankind. The two that are not represents the spiritual kingdom, which is strong as iron, hard to withstand. These two kingdoms joining together to bring forth the fifth element. Have you seen that movie? Here's another representation of it. Fire and air, water and earth, masculine and feminine joining together. In order to bring forth the new world order, you have to destroy the old world order. It has to be destroyed. It has to be toppled down, turned to powder, turned to absolute nothing. So, September 11th. 9-11. Read Revelation 9-11. I did a video called The Beast of 9-11. Okay, go take a look at it. On September 11, 2001, the World Trade Towers, there was two of them, they were brought down and destroyed, turned to powder, literally turned to powder. They took and cleared that space and built a new tower in its place, the Freedom Tower. Here's a picture of the top spire that sits atop a building that's 1,776 feet tall. That's the date on the bottom of the Great Seal of the United States of America, 1776. Okay? Are you starting to see this here? They had to tear down the old towers to build a new one in its place. Yet, before you can bring in the New World Order, you have to tear down the Old World Order. The New World Order, you see the design of the spire of this. A triangle pointing up, triangle pointing, da pointing down. It represents the fourth kingdom. Earth, air, fire, and water, partly strong, partly broken, joining together to bring in the new world order, which is 1,776 feet tall. Now, when witches use the four elements, they do so for a purpose. Remember what witchcraft is. It is uh, religious ritualism, that, is, that performs rituals in order to bring about a certain supernatural effect. So witches, they draw their circle, like Honey the Circle Maker, and they face north, south, east, and west, and they invoke the four spirits of the four winds of heaven, the four watchtowers, which are dragons, and um, the four elements of earth, air, fire, and water. The purpose of that is to get the four things working together for you to produce whatever the object of your magic is. Let's say you wanted to cast a love spell on somebody. You draw your circle, you get inside of it, you invoke the four powers, 
they are joined together so that your magic can be for the fifth element in that case is a devil that's going to go to whoever you want to fall in love with you and if they're lost influence them to fall in love with you curses if you're lost curses work mark it down if you're lost God will not protect you that protection comes by way of the blood of Jesus Christ and him alone but I believe that witches have power to cast spells and curses on people and they work. Why do they work? Is it because they're invoking the force? No. It's because they're getting devils to do their bidding for them. Devils, evil spirits, causing things to happen. So the fifth element represents whatever the, um, the design of the spell is for. So if someone casts a spell and they invoke the four elements because they want more money, there's no doubt in my mind that devils find a way for these people to get money. Make them rich. Give them whatever they want. Please and satisfy the, the lust of their flesh because it puts these people in bondage. See, I'd be afraid to play the lottery. or go to, I'd be afraid to go to a casino and start gambling. I'd be afraid I'd win. And I'd be stuck in that thinking I could win more and win more. And folks, that's a trap. But anyway, let me read this to you. In witchcraft rituals, the four elemental powers are summoned to join with the human participants inside the circle. The idea is that when the four elements are combined together, as in the ritual of the blade and the chalice, a fifth element is released called spirit or ether. Now watch this. A fifth element is released. Why is it released? Because right now, that fifth element is in prison. It's tied in chains, wrapped under darkness, waiting the day of judgment. The fifth element, my friends, is the beast and his kingdom. That's what it is. The fifth, if you notice, the, the four kingdoms. But the first kingdom was gold, Nebuchadnezzar. Second kingdom was silver. Third kingdom was brass alone all alone brass and then silver and then gold the fourth kingdom was iron but not just iron and clay okay there's an another element there and the I won't get into it but anyway the fifth element is the beast the Antichrist all right now watch this uh, here's a picture of the blade and chalice which is when they get together they have a ritual called the blade and the chalice let me just simply put it this way the blade is the masculine okay the chalice is the feminine now in some of the witches circles when they do the blade and chalice there's a man and there's a woman and he's holding a sword or a dagger and the woman's holding a cup or a chalice and at the end of the ritual the guy puts the dagger inside the cup and that's their ritual in some others the guy puts the blade in the cup. That's all I'm saying. Okay? It's, it's fornication. Fornication is one of the bases of witchcraft. Okay? But anyway, the blade and the chalice. At the bottom of the Louvre Museum in France, this was in the Da Vinci Code, you have this upside-down pyramid, pyramid pointing down, and you have this other pyramid, a lesser pyramid, pointing up. They're trying to touch each other. Notice that the upside down pyramid has all these little star figures on it. That's heaven trying to join and connect with earth. You're seeing here the representation of the fourth kingdom. Here it is uh, in the Da Vinci Code from Dan Brown. He put forth the idea that this image that Da Vinci drew of the Last Supper, the person sitting on Jesus' right hand is not John, the divine, it's Mary Magdalene, a woman. If you look at it, it's a woman. And notice that the space between them is a chalice space. And Christ makes the blade. So it's the masculine joining together with the feminine. Let me say it like this. The Son of God joining together with his harlot bride. Or let me say it like this the sons of God and the daughters of men together. And I mentioned, if you go back and look at this graphic here, 
between Jesus and Mary Magdalene, I mentioned it as the space between us. Do you know there was a movie that came out last year called The Space Between Us? You know what it was about? It was about an American astronaut woman who goes to the mission on Mars, builds a colony there, but she doesn't realize that she got pregnant before she left. She gives birth to a man-child on Mars and dies. Just like Phineas's wife, when she gave birth to Ichabod, she died. And so this boy is born in outer space. And he falls in love with a girl on the earth and he's chatting with her. And the whole point of the movie, the space between us, is that he's on Mars, she's on Earth. He wants to go to the Earth to be with her and does. And you know what happens after that? Once they get together, he brings her up to his place in the heavens. Da, da, da. You go watch it. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Because you'll see, and you may see more stuff that I didn't see in there, but I'm telling you, that's what that's all about. That's the fourth kingdom. The four elements coming together. The sons of God, daughters of men. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But it's done so to produce the fifth element, ether. Okay? Uh, there it is. Genesis 6, 4. Sons of God, daughters of men. They bear children to them. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That's what these symbols represent. There was a movie called The Fifth Element. Okay? The fifth element just happens to be the savior of the world. Revelation 6. I want you to notice something. Revelation 6, you have the, the opening of the seals of the book, the unsealed book. Jesus is opening the seals. The first three seals, three horsemen come out, horses and their riders. They represent various things. The fourth one, in the Bible, anytime you see the fourth thing, the fourth one it almost always is going to be different than the other three. And in this case, when the fourth seal is opened, the fourth horse is different than the other three in that the fourth horse has brought with him a different, an extra rider. Let's look at it. When they had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with beasts of the earth. What, how do they kill the fourth part of the earth? Sword, hunger, death, beasts. One, two, three, four. That's your fourth kingdom. And the fourth horseman that comes out is death. Think about it. And when death, when the fourth one finally comes out, when the first four seals are open and the fourth horse comes out, which is death, it brings in another spirit into this world and it is hell herself. She's, in the, in the movie, The Fifth Element, the fifth element was rendered as a woman, a red-headed Shekinah woman who had special powers. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. So you, you're starting to get it, right? When the four come together, the fifth one is released. And in this case, it's the kingdom, not the kingdom of heaven. It's the kingdom of hell. Hell is released on this earth, and it's hell's kingdom. Look at the beast. Revelation 13, I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, Having seven heads and ten horns, he rose up out of the sea. Upon his horns ten crowns, and his, upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was, number one, like unto a leopard. Number two, his feet were as the feet of a bear. Number three, his mouth is the mouth of a lion. Number four, the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. Do you see who the beast is? He is the conglomeration of four different things. Leopard, bear, lion, dragon. Earth, air, fire, water. The beast and his kingdom is that fifth element. It is that capstone. And this is all brought about by witchcraft. And remember back in Daniel, 
we saw the the working the two kingdoms at war with each other the wise men the astrologers the magicians and the chaldeans and then you have daniel hananiah mishael azariah it could be said there's no doubt in my mind that these four on god's side represent the four gospels matthew mark luke and john people let me just say this don't be afraid of witches and warlocks and wizards and, and there really are people who practice these. Don't be afraid of them. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Do we not have power given to us by God? Is not God our strength and our shield? Is not the word of God our protector? They can't put a curse on you. Devils can't enter into you and take you over. They can harass you, and they will. They do it to me all the time. But they can't control you. They want you to think they can. But folks, because of the gospel and what Jesus did on the cross, you have power over this. God's power in your life manifesting through you. Look at, watch this now. You believed the gospel, right? You believed what Matthew said. You believe what Mark said. You believe what Luke said. You believe what John said. You read them and you, be you believe John 3.16, for God so loved the world. So the four gospels, and you submitted to the Lord. You gave your life to the Lord. And what happens at that time? What is it that happens when you finally come to the place in your life where you say, you know what, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'll never forget, Brady and Bradley Crum used to go to church here. They're now working in, in, as assistants in different churches, doing tremendous, tremendous ministry. But it, their dad, they wanted their dad so bad to get saved. And I was with them when their dad found out he had cancer. In fact, just before the doctor came in to tell him he had cancer, I was alone with Keith in that hospital room. And nobody bothered us. You know how hospital rooms, there's somebody coming in all the time. Nobody bothered us. And I sat down with him because I had a feeling this was going to go bad. And I led Keith to the Lord that day. Now, Keith, this guy had never read a Bible. All he had heard was from his two sons. He was not a religious person, never went to church a day in his life. But he believed what I was telling him. I was giving him scripture. You know I was. And he believed it. And he asked Jesus into his heart right then and there. You know what he told his sons two days after that? He said, Dad, how you feeling? He said, boys, it just feels like I have somebody living inside of me, like it's different now. And I'm just going, Whew. and I told those guys, I said, you guys have been reading the Bible all your life to come to that understanding, and in one day he gets it. Do you know why? Because when you submit your life to the Lord in salvation and you are born again, you believe what the Gospels tell you, you now have the Spirit of God inside of you see what happens when the four gospels are believed by the sinner they bring in a spirit the holy spirit paul says it like this ephesians 1 13 in whom ye also trusted after that you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation stop right here you believed matthew mark luke and john right what happens after you believe them in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Look at the order of your Bible, people. Look at the order of your Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. What happens after the four Gospels are presented to the world? When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. The four Gospels, the life of Jesus, brings in the Holy Ghost. Isn't it cool? And you flip that upside down. Turn it 180 degrees. Now you have 
Look at the graphic here and then look here. Earth, air, fire, and water, witchcraft. And the intended purpose of witchcraft is to bring in this capstone. This is why Manasseh was doing what he was doing. This is why the very last things that he did was witchcraft, familiar spirits, wizardry. Because that's nearing the pinnacle of bringing in the fifth element. And that fifth element is that capstone on top of that unfinished, count it, one, two, three, four, five. Dun, dun, dun. Okay? Let me just illustrate it to you like this. DNA. Old Testament, New Testament. The two rungs of DNA represent the Old and New Testament. They're made of phosphorus and sugar. Phosphorus is light. Sugar is the Word of God tastes sweet. Okay? You have four base pairs. Adenine, thymine, only those two can go together. It's like um, in the four elements, you have opposites coming together. You have, uh, let's see, how is it? You have earth and air, they're opposites. You have fire and water, they're opposites. And when those come together, you get the fifth element. In DNA, when adenine and thymine join together and guanine and cytosine join together, they start spelling out a genetic code. When the four base pairs are joined together, you get life. Everything that's alive on this planet has four base pairs. They all have DNA, every one of them. Look at this. When, th when these four base pairs come together, the words of our genetic book are written and they produce life. Jo Job 33, 4, the Spirit of God hath made me and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. John 6, 63, it is the Spirit that quickeneth, which means gives life. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So now think of these four elements in terms of the four base pairs. Okay? Um... Take a look at it. The four elements, the fourth kingdom, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. That brings in another or any other gospel, another spirit, and another Jesus. And these emblems of earth, air, fire, and water are everywhere. And I'm going to show you some examples before I get out of here. Okay? Um, take a look at this. Did you see that movie, uh, what was it called? What was that movie called? Um, Inside Out. Is it like a computer graphic cartoon, right? About what's going on in this girl's head and all these emotions that she has? Guess what I found? Take a look at this. Chinese medicine expresses one's emotional life through the phenomenon called Wu Jing, often translated as the five elements or five phases. These are almost identical to the characters in Inside Out. Joy, sadness or grief, anger, fear, and related to disgust, worry, or overthinking. These correspond to the elements, fire, metal, wood, water, and earth. Every organ, acupuncture meridian, and physiological function in your body is connected to these elements and their emotions. People, let, let me just, if you have had someone do acupuncture on you, I'm not saying that you've got the mark of the beast and you can't have the Holy Spirit and you're going to hell. Someone suggest, very well-meaning suggested that I have acupuncture to help me with my back. Uh-uh. Because -uh. I know what's behind it. It is Chinese philosophy of these elements. And that these elements, and, and if they can just hit certain pressure points, then it's going to reconduct the energies of my body and it's going to... I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But whoever wrote this movie, Inside Out, was very well aware of the four elements, five elements system. Because in this movie, this little girl goes through a transformation because of the addition of a new emotion.
coming in here. Let's go back to this Mercy logo. I saw it this morning. I jumped up, paused the TV, grabbed my iPhone, took a picture of it, brought it to you today. Earth, air, fire, and water. Notice that when they are joining together, there's something hidden in, inside of there, isn't it? You see a cross, but it's not, the cross is not really there, is it? But it is. Okay, that nobody drew this cross. They drew the four elements, and the four elements produced this cross. You get that? The cross is an X chromosome, an X, X men thing. X men all have genetic alterations, don't they? Okay? And you see, you're going to, once you know what to look for, you'll see it. Here's a company that, that produces what's called a smart wall. As you're at the grocery store, the smart wall recognizes you, recognizes your shopping history, and puts up a list of commercials designed specifically for you. The software that built this is called Elements Software. Notice their logo is a hexagon, by the way, six-sided figure. Um, Steinberg, I'm a musician. And I, I don't use Cubase, I use a different one, but Cubase Elements, Personal Music Production System. Why the elements? Because it's the elements of earth, air, fire, and water. Here's a church called the Element Christian Church. And they actually use earth, air, fire, and water as their logo, people. It's witchcraft. Here's another one from Fuller Theological Seminary, Elements Ministry Resources. Elements Church, Family uh, on Mission, Element Church, Reach People, Change Lives, Infuse the Elements. Look at that. Uh, Elements, welcome to Elements Church. We're glad you're here. Are you kidding me? Another one. Elements Church. Welcome to Elements Church. Spiritual, but not religious. Good grief. This is uh, some sort of Elements Ministry here. Elements Children's Mystery Ministry, mystery conference, <laughs> ministry conference, okay? Here's another one, Elements Kids Worship. This is part of the former denomination of this church. They have a, stop right here. They have a conference every year called the D6 Conference. A, B, C, D. D is a four. It's a four next to a six. 46. He said, ah, that had nothing to do with DNA. The DNA of D6, building blocks of generational discipleship. One of their recent conferences, the motto or the slogan of the conference was, how can we change the DNA of the church? They're already doing it. Here's the DNA of the church, right here. When you alter the DNA, you alter the creature. You turn the creature and what is produced by that DNA into something that does not resemble what this DNA produces. You see what I'm saying? This DNA, listen to me, it, it's just, it's real simple here. There are those who follow only the King James Bible. There are those who don't. And we can see. They can see in us for sure. They see it because you know how I know? I was on their team. And simply because of the Bible that people used, I hated them. I hated King James people. I wanted nothing to do with them. I wanted to be different than them. And the devil was trying to get me to just dive right in these new translations so he could transform me. How can we change the DNA of our church? They're already doing it. Got these false Bibles in them. Look at this one. Uh, Bruno Mars. 20 seconds to Mars. Look at their logo. It's the air logo. It's the kingdom that's divided, partly broken. The prince of the power of the air. 
the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's the logo that this, look, he's got it tattooed on his arms and then he's making it with his fingers. He is showing you that he is guided by the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children. I'm pretty sure he's the one writing all of his songs too. Adobe. You know what Adobe is, don't you? Adobe um, Photoshop. Adobe, um, they're the ones that came up with a PDF document, a portable digital format, something like that. Um, Adobe Reader, Adobe Fonts, back when in the days of Windows 3.1. Uh, they now have the Adobe Suite, which is uh, Power, not PowerPoint. Anyway, they have all this, this graphics production software. Okay, Premiere, which is video editing. Um, I own the whole set, paid $1,400 for the whole set. We don't use them. Okay, so anyway, Adobe now has the Adobe Elements, Adobe Creative Suite. And notice that their icons are all these elemental icons. Do you know what the word adobe means? It's a Spanish word for brick. That's what adobe means. You know, we studied American history and we found out all these Native Americans made houses out of adobe. Adobe was simply mud bricks. Why did they name it adobe? Genesis 11.3, and they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them throughly and they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. Adobe Elements. Adobe's building something. Okay? Adobe Elements. Adobe Photoshop Elements. It uses the elements of the earth, the air, fire, and water. Here's a boat called the Element. The, Bay, the Bayliner Company makes a boat called the Element Boat. Amazon Elements. Here's a game called Rule the Elements. Elements is coming to life. Ugh. Element, keep discovering. Honda Element. Here's another one. Element, empowering extraordinary. The Element Fleet. Ninjago. Or maybe it's Ninja Go. Look at these four ninjas. One is earth. One is fire. One is water. One is air. The, white, the guy in white is air. That's clouds. The guy in red, that's fire. The blue is water. The green guy over there, that's dirt or the earth. And these kids, these kids are learning elemental rituals, elemental witchcraft, playing with these toys. The Olympics logo, the Olympics logo, look at it. It has, it has the fifth element, uh, which is black, okay? Uh, I saw this, ESPN. Take a look at it. This was the logo. They were doing some interview with this guy, Pablo whatever, talking about football or something like that. And they use the elements. See the yellow, the blue, the red, and the green. Yellow, blue, red, and green. Keep your eyes open for any kind of logo using those four colors. Ye yellow or orange or maybe white represents air. Blue is the water. Red is fire. And green is usually the earth because of the grass. Okay? And notice that they use these little triangles on all four of those, that is the elemental symbol. Elemental. What I'm saying to you is, I think that they are introducing this into the collective thoughts of all human beings on this planet. By making all of their products, all their symbols, all their logos, all their emblems, somehow related to the number six or the four elements. Bringing this religion back to life. Mm. Uh, Shutterstock uses the four colors. PlayStation, see it? Red, yellow, green, and blue. Four elements. eBay has four letters and four colors. Red, blue, yellow, green. Fire, water, air, and earth. Google. Can Google solve death. Notice the Google logo with DNA in it. Google, even though it has six letters, they use the four colors. Blue for water, red for fire, yellow for air, green for earth. Google has a 
new company called Calico that deals with genetics, DNA. Do you know what Calico, you know what a, cal, you know, you know, a Calico cat is? A Calico cat is a one single cat that is made up of multiple colors, more than two colors. A Calico cat, that's their company, Calico. Why? It's one company dealing with genetics made up of four different colors, red, blue, green, and yellow, earth, air, fire, and water. Microsoft does the same thing. Take a look at it. And by the way, remember what I showed you a while ago? The Microsoft logo, yellow, green, blue, and red, when those come together, they form a cross. Now, the cross is not there. But what they, when they come together, they make it appear. You get that? That's what this is. When the four come together, sons of God, daughters of men come together, they're going to make this appear. Let's go back to this, the Mercy logo. Because Mer Mercy deals with healthcare. There is a movement all around the world to take over medicine and rule it from the top down. Okay, there is. This is why all these private hospitals are being bought out by these big corporations, including the Sisters of Mercy. Amen. Okay, these nuns, these nuns own a multi-billion dollar healthcare corporation. Microsoft will solve cancer within 10 years by reprogramming diseased cells. See, they're dealing with genetics, people. And that's what, that's what that X is, that cross is in the middle. It's not there until the four elements come together to make it appear. Right now, the man of sin is not here. But when the partially strong and partially weak come together, the four elements the, in, the in the four base pairs, when they come together, then shall that wicked be revealed. Okay? Uh, I'm almost done here. Watch this. Ephesians 6.10. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. I want you to turn to Joshua 23 and 13 in your Bible. And I'm going to put it up on the screen, but I want you to underline this. It's very important, okay? Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes until you perish from all this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. So this is the reason why we're wrestling with these. Because this represents a kingdom. And as sure as I'm sitting here, that kingdom is going to try to overtake you. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. There are going to be snares and traps unto you and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes. And if you don't wrestle against them, they're going to take over you, your family, your church, your school, your nation, they're going to take over the world. Now, God has granted that it's going to be given to them to take over, okay? I get it. But that doesn't mean that they have to take control of your family just because God said so or just because they want it. Stand against them. Stand up. Stand, having done all, to stand in these last days stand against these principalities and powers. They are traps and snares and scourges and thorns. You stand against them. Fight them spiritually. Prayer, Bible reading. Prayer, Bible reading. Pray some more, read some more Bible until they leave. Because at some point, they just can't handle the presence of Jesus Christ. And they leave. Okay? Fight the good fight, people. I love you. I've got a little bit. We're going to go through the Bible. And we're going to see this fourth kingdom all through the scriptures. Okay? We'll do that next time. God bless you. It's good to be with you. We'll see you. Bye-bye.